Good morning and good evening to all. Thanks for joining the exclusive webinar on the power of generative AI and how it is shaping the future of RPA and IDP. This session will highlight groundbreaking applications, including a demonstration and integration of generative AI within the RPA and IDP landscape that is robotic process automation and intelligent document processing landscape. You will gain valuable insights into how generative AI is revolutionizing the future of work, empowering organizations to build, deploy, and manage bots with enhanced intelligence and ease. Now, I would like to introduce our esteemed speaker, Shashi Bhargava, EVP Intelligent Automation Products and Solutions. Shashi has over 40 years of experience in delivering software services to clients across the world on multiple technologies and domains. He has successfully led organizational growth through PL management, client management, pre sales support, product design, and development. Before I hand over to Shashi, I do have a set of obligatory housekeeping announcements to go, to go over before we officially get started. While all lines are on mute by default, feel free to chat with us ask questions, and show your reactions using the Zoom control panel. During the session, we will launch two poll questions. Please do enter your response, and we shall share the poll results immediately after. Drop your questions in the Q&A section, and we'll make sure to address them at the end of the session. The on-demand recording and presentation will be available to all participants after the webinar, and also do share your feedback in the feedback form, which appears post the webinar. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time and joining the webinar. We will officially get started with Shashi. Over to you. Thank you, Muskan. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar today on a very interesting topic of generative AI in the intelligent automation. So today's agenda is we'll be covering Gen AI in the intelligent automation. What are the basic benefits? What are the things you're looking at? Consumption of Gen AI in the intelligent automation. Leveraging Gen AI in the RPA, robotic process automation space, what kind of things you can do leveraging the Gen AI. Third, we are going to cover the leveraging Gen AI in intelligent document processing. We've been talking about intelligent document processing using cognitive capture, a lot of AI ML. Now using Gen AI, how it has impacted the IDP processing. And fourth, we'll be covering the Gen AI in the business intelligence as well. So that's our agenda for today. Please feel free to ask any questions which you have. Just post it in the chat and we'll try to answer that. Moving forward, so our Datamatic Intelligent Automation Platform at Datamatics, we have this platform, Intelligent Automation Platform, consisting of primarily three products. One is the first one is the TrueBot, which is a robotic process automation product. Second one is the TrueCap Plus, which is intelligent document processing. And third one is a true BI, which is a business intelligence tool. So these three products comprise our intelligent automation platform. And all these three products are powered by our true AI, which is a set of AI ML models, which you have developed with a set of IPs, which we have with us. And depending on the different use cases and different types they are consumed in all these three different products as we move along. Now let's see what the Gen AI's impact is. It's a very transformative impact. I think everybody's talking about in the last about nine to 10 months. And especially if you look at the last five to six months, people are talking about it. The chat GPT, open AI with a lot of names, LLMs, prompt engineering, everything is being talked about and many, many multiple use cases are coming out of that. Today we'll focus on the intelligent automation side of it, on the products like RPA, IDP, and the business intelligence, how it has got, it has impacted. It's actually a really a game changer. The way the bots were developed in the RPA, the way the processing happens in the IDP, and the way the dashboards and you see the intelligence or you look at the data which you have in the business intelligence tool. We look at some of the things like one is the data agility, the kind of unstructured document in the IDP space. It always been a challenge to look at the unstructured data and getting the data information out of it. Enterprises have like terabytes of data lying in the unstructured document, which they like to harvest it and use it for the business purposes. And today with the Gen AI, that seems very possible and people are using that thing. You look at the self-learning, yes. 
it comes earlier the challenge used to be training the model with required data you used to require a lot of data to train the models but today you get pre-trained models and you can use self-learning techniques to train the model to adapt to what you want to do with it that is something which Gen AI is helping quite a lot adaptive skills it's very much like you know process changes are coming in the rpa for example a lot of process changes happen and bots have to adapt to it and this is exactly where this kind of skills is very useful in the RPA tools. Very easy to use. Now you can go and create the product and we'll see the demo. You can see in the RPA, you can create the bot using a natural language commands. Okay, you need not know the complete syntax and complete kind of components which is there. There are a lot of components typically in a robotic process automation tool. You need to know which one to use when with using this Gen AI, a Gen AI tool or Gen AI capability integrating those things in the RPA tool, it has become much easier and much easier to use. Quicker deployment, using Gen AI, the development time has got substantially reduced. You see a lot of productivity gains coming out of it. The things which are going live in weeks, now they are getting live in the days. That's the kind of a quick deployment you can have is using the Gen AI. There's a continuous improvement also. As you learn, as the models, as you keep doing certain things, People can learn, the systems can learn from there and can be incorporated for much better productivity and the accuracy as we move. But to now we'll take one by one and talk about the RPA, what we have done in the RPA to what RPA, how we are leveraging the Gen AI. Before that, just a, a high level TrueBot architecture, the people or the audience who do not know about it. Okay, so we have this TrueBot architecture where we one piece is the designer on the left hand side where you can go and create the bots. So you have a component toolbox. We've got about more than 600 plus components. You have the visual editing, universal recorder. You can record the processes you want it and using that the bot can be created. And the whole bot package then can be exported to the cockpit, which is the right hand side, which is the centralized control for monitoring, managing, running and executing the bots. And you can connect to various kind of application platform, right from legacy application to mainframe, to browser based application, web applications. The bots can run in the attended mode or the unattended mode. So that's the basic architecture of the true bot and see how we can leverage in this true bot using the Gen AI. Now, using the Gen AI in case of RPA, number one, if you go for the bot development, you have to understand the business process. Subject matter expert has to come or the business process owner has to come and explain you the process to a bot developer. And bot developer need to know about the product which is using to create the bot. He needs to be expert on that, know about every component and then create the bot. This is the current process. But using Gen AI, even the process can be defined. A user can just give one line description of the process. Let's say, for example, I want to update the data from Excel to SAP and the various steps involved comes out using the Gen AI. And that's what you've done, integrated in the product itself. And the whole process flow is displayed to the subject or to the business owner. Can we call it as a co-pilot? Because yes, the steps come out and the business owner can go and fine tune the steps if required based on the particular enterprise or organization where he's working and is specific to his own process. That is the first step, the process definition comes out, the different steps of the process come out, what we call sometimes is the requirement document or the process document that comes out pretty quickly and you can just refine it and reduce it a lot of time to develop it. Then using this process workflow, you can then go using the generative AI, you can go and identify what are the right components in the bot RPA tool. We have in TrueBot roughly about 600 plus components and we have trained the model in such a way that depending on the business process steps, it selects the right components and sequences it and shows it to the bot developer. Once the bot developer looks at these components, he kinds of, it's again a co-pilot mode. He looks at it. If he wants to refine certain things, he can do that thing. And once that refinement is done, it goes and automatically create the process workflow or the bot required for it. Okay, the complete skeleton of the bot comes in. And I can tell you, this is definitely reduced with about 50 to 60% of the time which typically a bot developer will take it. The skeleton bot comes in and what you need to do is, let's say you are 
playing with an Excel file or you're doing an SAP ERP, you just need to give the user ID pair of certain parameters required for the various components. Let's say you're playing with an Excel file, you need to give this file path, you need to give the different column names, those things parameter, you need to set it and bot is pretty much ready. So it's a very, very revolutionizing thing in the case of RPA that using a bot development, using a natural language, something like a chatbot kind of an interface, you can do this thing. We do liberate the public LLMs, which are available in the market, and we have domain-specific LLMs also can be used to get much finer processes and which helps you in creating the bot much easier. Also using Gen AI, now the complete user manual, release manual, everything you can do a chatbot is on the user manual using a natural language that way in a multi multilingual, different languages, you can go and ask a question and the complete contextual help comes to you out in particular things. That is something we have done in the true bot or RPA product using the leading Gen AI. So the next thing comes, what are the advantage? What benefit do you get getting the Gen AI? So number one is increasing the developer's productivity. The bot developers used to take sometimes weeks or months to develop a particular bot because they have to understand the process, they have to go to the business owner, repeat the process, document the process, and then select the right component to get the most efficient bot which they are looking for it. Now all that can be done using the Gen AI in the true bot directly. And that reduces the time for developing a bot and hence increasing the productivity also. You can go live as well pretty fast because now you can generate the bot pretty quickly. Within a matter of days, you can develop the bot and you can move it into the live as quickly as you can. You don't have to wait for two months, three months to make the bot live. Reducing the cost of maintaining the bot, even if allow you to look at the bots which have been already developed, you can re-engineer it. You can look at it. If any changes are coming in using this Genia facility, using natural language command, you can use that and maintain the bot, which reduces the cost of maintaining any small process changes keep coming in, target applications keep changing it. You can work on that and reduce the cost of it. Cost of building the bot definitely has gone down because the productivity is going up. You're taking less time of the bot developer. You're taking much less time of the business owner or the process owner. And hence the cost of building the bot has come down substantially. The last one is the help in the natural language. Okay, you can ask questions just like a typical chatbot. You can ask in the natural language. You can get whatever you're looking for it and that too in the multilingual. Let me go and just run a small video which shows you how we can do how the bot is developing. Hi, using Datamatics TruePy. Hi, let's see a demo of Salesforce automation powered by generative AI using Datamatics TruePilot, your co-pilot for the TrueBot RPA platform. In this demo, we will automate the task of creating tickets in Salesforce based on the input received from an Excel file. Let's see how TruePilot works. The user provides a workflow or task description using natural language into the TruePilot chat box. TruePilot intelligently identifies and suggests the most suitable automation components based on the user's requirements and context to generate a logical workflow. Next, the user verifies the steps and clicks on Create Workflow. TruePilot generates descriptions and and summaries for the created automation workflows and individual automation components, making it easier for users to understand and document their processes. Now, the user configures the required inputs to run the workflow. This could include selecting the Excel file and specifying the Salesforce destination. And there you have it. TruePilot simplifies the process of creating complex workflows in a matter of minutes. Now, let's see a demo of Datamatics TrueHelp, an in-context generative AI assistant within TrueBot Designer, to quickly answer users' questions on any aspect of the TrueBot platform. In this demo, we will ask, how to add a new record in Salesforce. Let's see how TrueHelp works. The user provides a query using natural language into the TrueHelp chat box. TrueHelp provides instant, context-aware guidance directly from the help documentation, enhancing productivity, improving user interaction, and reducing the learning curve. Thank you. I think we'll have a poll here. Mamus Khan, can you flash the poll for the audience, please?
uh, pretty pretty interesting results. I think which you got it. I think many of them, many of these features which have come courtesy generative AI integrating of Gen AI into the RPA product. I think uh, almost like many of the features you are going crossing almost 63 percent, 60 63 percent for most of the point. I think faster deployment of bot, ease of bot creation. These are the things which you have seen with some of our customers really getting a benefit out of it and ROI of it. Thank you everyone for participating in the poll. I think we'll close this and move on to the next thing, which is the intelligent document processing, which is a product called TrueCap Plus. I'll quickly go through uh, a little bit about TrueCap Plus who are not aware of it. Okay, this is the very, very high level architecture of our IDP product, intelligent document processing. We call it TrueCap Plus. It's a cognitive capture tool. As you can see on the architecture left-hand side, the system input is there and the documents can be ingested using either email via FTEP or REST API, or they can be on a Google Drive or shared folder. That's the way you ingest the document and the tool is used to capture the various data elements on each of the documents which you ingest into the system. The main engine is the data processing engine. We do process using the input process. There are certain rules, input tools are applied there to take care of the documents which are coming in, all kinds of documents which come in, like PDF, tape, we handle most of the document format which are there. Post that, we do the doc classification in the auto, auto splitting. Classification is something like categorization of the document, depending on what kind of document it is, we need to extract the data elements from there. And if required, if multiple files, multiple documents are coming in a single file, uh, we can do the auto splitting based on the certain rules. We do the pre-processing as well to enhance the various image quality because sometimes image quality is not very conducive to extract the right numbers of the right data elements. So we try to enhance the quality as much as we can using the different techniques. Once we do the OCR, we have an AI-powered extraction. We have N number of models, AI ML models, which are part of the system, depending on the use case, depending on the type of document. And we have also inbuilt the Gen AI, which you will see the demos move around, where Gen AI also is used for extraction, depending on the use case. And this is the main, main engine of the data processing, which does the extraction of the document data from the various documents. There's a validation piece of it. Once the data is extracted, it gets validated with a certain rules. It could be with respect to databases or certain other business rules, which may be easily configured in this LCNC kind of a platform. If required, because some of the images in the real life, if you see the handwritten documents and some document, the quality of image is not very good. The capture is not done correctly and you see the validation rules will fail out there, which goes into the human in the loop for the human review. They review the document, they correct the document, and once that is corrected, the structured data is exported from there, which can be in the format of CSV, REST API, XML, JSON, whichever way you want to have it. Also see on the bottom of it, we have a TrueCap Studio, which is basically for various kinds of models which we have inbuilt into the product that can be trained by the business users themselves without requiring any line of any, any single line of coding. They can go and train many of these models with their own documents, which they can do with it. You can also do image profiling, correction of what kind of image corrections you are looking for it. And now you can also bring your own ML model. If you have developed a particular model for extraction, you can bring it and you can plug it into this product directly. From the administrative perspective, I think you have all the different personas of the product. You have the dashboard, operational analytics, business analytics, Everything is available out there and the SMEs can go and define the various, what we call as an ontology definition or the document definition for each doc type, what kind of fields you are extracting it. And now we are using the Gen AI even to identify what kind of a document is and what kind of a fields you want to extract it from there. And we'll talk about it as you move forward. We also have human in the loop where the operators work on it. We have done enough of empathetic research to figure out what, how to increase the productivity of this human reviewer who are there. How do they work it? We have gone and sat with those them in the various centers, captive centers, we have find that thousands of operators work on the various document to get their feedback and made this HITL screen, which is very, very intuitive and very gives a much more higher productivity for the human reviews. 
Now, these are some of the very important features of the true cap. If you look at it, number one, it's a template free. So for a particular document type, as you know, you get various kinds of different shape and sizes. You get the various document. You don't have to go and define template for each one of them. You can box on it, you define the number of fields, you define the document definition once, and the system understands it, and it works on the set template free mode. Second feature is cognitive capture. As I mentioned earlier, also using various AI ML model. We use this particular AI ML model to do the extraction. So one of the very critical thing in the document extraction is the table extraction. We have a model which does extract automatically from various kinds of tables with multiple header lines, the column flowing, crossing, overflowing in each other column without header, crossing through multiple pages, or you have nested tables. So, so many kinds of tables are there in the real life and we handle most of it and we keep developing more and more. So that's the kind of a quality capture thing. We have it with us. Another important thing feature we have is the self-learning. So as users move along, if suppose some reason that data is not extracted and user does a click and capture, we learn it from there, we capture the data and we train the model at the back end to make sure when the similar document comes next time, we can do the extraction from there. We have a classification function in the product which basically classifies the various kinds of documents which are coming in. Let's say it could be a banking case, it could be insurance case, it could be a transport case, and a whole set of documents comes in a single file. You can identify, like in case of a transport, whether it's an invoice, whether it's a bill of lading, it's a packing slip. We can identify it because the data elements to be captured for each of the doc type will vary on the type of classification which we have. We have a studio for baselining and the model training. As mentioned earlier, you can go while you're pulling out a new document type in this product. So you have to do the baselining. You have to create the golden data, make sure you're getting the right kind of a auto accuracy, which you're looking for it. And this studio helps you baseline the data, compare it. And there's always a business analytics available to you. Monitor the kind of accuracy you're getting in a real time basis. And if you need to fine tune it, you can go and do the fine tune. Here you train the models, you can keep different versions of the model and decide which one you want to roll it out in the production. We do come with the pre-trained models, where for many, many documents, almost like close to about 70 to 80 documents, popular ones, we have already pre-trained models which can be used or being fine-tuned a little bit to make the users go live pretty fast. We have seen many of our customers using this product and using this pre-trained model, they have gone live within a week's time. You do have business and operational governance. So on the shop floor, when the documents are being uh, being processed, thousands of documents, millions of pages are getting processed. You need to have an operational level, complete the reconciliation of the reports, all the documents, everything is available. Ready reports are there, ready dashboards are there, including the productivity of the different human users who are working on it. Same time, we have business KPIs, kind of accuracy, total document processing, everything is there. The real time, it's a complete inbuilt workflow which we have right from ingestion of the document, processing of the document, extraction of the document, handling by the human reviewers, as well as the exporting the restructured document out to the non stream system. It's completely very famous for, for the business user. It's a we call it the low code, no code kind of a platform where you don't need to do a single line of coding. If a business users come, a smart business users can come and set up the system themselves and start using that thing. And with the Gen AI coming into it, it's further getting moving more towards high level of what we call as the citizen developers who are using it at a much, much higher level of next generation of citizen developer. That's why I put it across. We do handle the heterogeneous document. What I mean by heterogeneous document is various different doc types coming together. One of the classic cases could be like a bank loan document or a health insurance claim where you see various different documents. Maybe the, like in, for example, in the health insurance claim, you have a doctor prescription, you have hospital summary, you have medical reports, you have the medical, different kind of medical reports, maybe medicine bills you have, hospital bills you have. So all those documents come together or maybe a tax return filing, when you do it, you get different types of forms, which you get it across from bank statement, your investment statements, all of that come together. And this is one single case and the whole thing can be treated as a single case with multiple doc types, proper extraction happening. You can correct it, get the structured data and use it in the downstream system. That was mainly on the two cap major highlight, which I wanted to do it. 
Now, coming into what we have done with the Gen AI in the true cap, in the intelligent document processing, some really we have done smart things. Number one is the auto classification. Even if you don't know what kind of a document is, the traditional way has been that you give me a set of documents for a particular type, I can go and train the model. And then if the similar document comes, the model can identify which this document is. Now with this auto classification using the generative AI, we can identify, we can categorize the document if it's one of the generally publicly known kind of a document. For example, text documents, you take it, you take it, transport industry, health industries, many of those are standard documents we can identify it automatically using Gen AI. We don't need to train the engine. It's pre-trained kind of a thing and you can use that. Second, the most important feature we've added is the auto creation of auto. Once we know what kind of a document you've given, we know what kind of a fields which you need to do it from there, what need to be extracted from this document. We don't have to go and ask the business users. We can have the first set of the fields automatically identified using Gen AI, which can be shown. And that's what we call the co-pilot in a co-pilot mode to the business users. Okay, this is the X document you've given. We know that these are the 20 fields which you want to extract from this document. He can look at it and he can plus minus, he can do some editing which he wants to, and that's how the creation of ontology happens. We also create using Gen AI certain rules for the validation. So different fields which are coming in, we can go and do that thing. We can figure out what kind of a rules, validations needs to be applied using Gen AI, which today, in today's world, in today's this, this time, some business user has to come and define it and somebody has to go and configure it. Here we identify it ourselves, we configure it and we just give it as if for a review to the user to look at it. And that's where the, another thing is smart selection of context specific fields, which I talked about it, which is used for creating the ontology and many things which we do while creating the ontology. For example, we identify what is the date format on the document, what is the kind of currency if it is there, and all that is automatically identified and put into the ontology. So the creation of the document definition or the ontology reduces considerably. We do support multilingual support. So in many of the documents, when you go across, you get into multiple languages, more than like, you know, maybe European languages or Mandarin, Middle East, different kind of languages come in. Today, now with using Gen AI, we can support that also. So different keywords which we need to know about it, Gen AI helps us to identifying those things and we can handle the multilingual documents. Here we can leverage the public LLMs. We can also go, if we are using that thing in the product and they have different public LLMs, you can connect to any one of them in the product and use that. Another very good important feature is the ad hoc analytics, which you've added in the true cap IDP, where Actually, once the extraction is done, typically on a document, what you see is what you get, but we can also do on a contextual base, we can ask the questions in the natural language and you can get the answers. For example, if there's a contract document, which could be 80 page, 100 page document, you want to ask that what's the liability clause in this, maybe directly it's not there, but somewhere if you look at the language, you can figure it out and using Gen AI, we can do that thing. Another example I'll give you is, let's say you get a medical report, pathological reports are there. You can ask certain information like, okay, which parameters are not up, not within the range or we're in the danger zone. You can identify that directly, which is not written very straight way on the document type, but contextually you can look at it and get that information. We can extract data from a lot of complex documents. This has been the challenge in the IDP industry, IDP products, if you look at it, very complex documents, honest structured documents, and people have very, very different requirement to extract the data. And this is where the Gen AI is extremely helpful and we've incorporated that through that extraction of the model. And as I mentioned about it, AIML enabled this product is, so we have a lot of AIML different models, a lot of pre-trained models are pretty much there in the product. We can do incremental model training based on the customer's document. We have a document classification in the splitting, which I spoke about it. There's an NLP based extraction. We have model NLP models, which can use that thing. There's a self learning capability in the product to understand it. And data is used to train the models to give much better accuracy as we move forward. We do the object identifications like logos, stamps, tables, barcode, QR code, photos, signatures, all that we use different AIML model to identify in the various document and capture it. We do provide signature and photo matching. You can do the matching of the signatures and the photo. 
that can be done easily using various AIML models. And there's a workbench for incremental model training and base training, as I mentioned. These are some of the benefits of getting Gen AI in the IDP space. So data medics two cap, number one, higher accuracy. Everybody in the IDP looks for the higher accuracy and what I call the auto extraction accuracy. And using Gen AI, we can increase this accuracy considerably. Very reduced training time so far for doing the extraction using the AML model. The traditional way has been to get the n number of samples, annotate them, and train the model. But using Gen AI, the training time has reduced very much considerably out there. We can handle multilingual law much easier, different languages, because using the Gen AI, different, the same type of document type coming in the multiple languages, it can be easily handled. We can extract the data from there. Considering this, yes, you can go much faster, go live, like where people are going live in a week's time. Now I think people can go easily in the day's time using the GenAI capability. And overall cost of maintenance also gets reduced for maintaining the different kind of ontology document definition, because using GenAI, it helps you in doing that as well. I'll go and run a demo for you, okay? On, on the TrueCap side. In this it. demo, we are developing document definition or ontology in TrueCap Plus by leveraging generative AI. The user needs to upload a sample document for which the ontology needs to be created. TrueCap Plus identifies the document class and extracts the required fields within seconds. Here you can see TrueCap Plus has automatically identified the document class as purchase order. You can also see TrueCA Plus has automatically captured the document fields. It also provides an option to define ontology fields in different languages. You can also see here TrueCap Plus has leveraged Gen AI to automatically create the field details, properties such as field location, keywords, and validation rules as well as extraction rules. In ontology properties you can see TrueCap Plus has automatically aligned the basic settings with the document class. The user also has the option to manually adjust properties. Now let's see how TrueCap Plus leverages Gen AI for built-in data querying. Here for the demo purpose, we are using an unstructured document like Vendor Agreement. TrueCap Plus provides built-in functionality to query in natural language and analyze the answer to the query within the same interface. This makes it convenient for the user to work with the data without switching between different tools. It is highly accurate and also supports multiple languages. In this demo, we are developing document definition or ontology in TrueCap Plus. Okay, now we'll move on to the True BI piece of it, which is a business intelligence tool. Okay, but before that, uh, Muskan, can you run the second poll, please? Okay, thank you, Muskan. Very interesting results. I'm happy to see that automated data extraction people are using and noted the 69% of it. Yes, I think Gen AI, I see that many of our customers also using that thing, whatever extraction challenges which we had in the product so far, the effort was, was required to train the AIML models to get that kind of an extraction. Yes, Gen AI helps that thing. That's a very good thing, which I see it. And the next two are the document summarization and automated creation, automated creation of ontology. Yes, this reduces and if any kind of a new documents are coming in, new doc types are coming in, you can define the ontologies very quickly. And uh, even summarization and the categorization, more or less they are at 46, 42%. I really feel that yes, that's where the Gen AI helps and it's absolutely the line which I also see most of the customers using it. Thank you, thank you once again for participating in the poll. I think we'll go ahead and close the poll. So I'll now move on to the True BI, which is our business intelligence tool, okay, and for developing the various kind of dashboards and the reports which you can have on either you have a centralized database or data lake or data um, data warehouse on which you can generate maybe certain pixel perfect reports, or you can have dashboards for doing the running the analytics online. I'll just quickly run through some of the features which we have in the True BI. 
the number one is the sales service pick and choose creation. Even the business users, once the data set is defined by the DBA or the data owners, the business users can go and pick and create the dashboards on their own, which is very easy to learn and do it. It does handle enterprise reporting, but there's still many enterprises people would like to have a pixel perfect report coming to them on a regular periodic basis. And it does have a report writer and these things which can generate the pixel perfect report and send it to the various users depending on the kind of various access right or data access right they have. We have a very enhanced drill down and data filtering capability. So on a dashboard, you can drill down to multiple levels to really look at the what the root cause of certain things after looking at the data. We do have a scheduler incorporated in the product where you can schedule the various to the dashboard, which can go to the multiple users. So we have our customers, some of the customers who have like users in the uh, numbers like 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 users who are using this thing. And many of them have scheduled the reports the data gets consolidated during the late, late night, late night, and early morning, various reports are generated, which are scheduled there. So people get this pixel perfect report in their inbox before they hit the wall. Sharing and collaboration, that is what we emphasize on it. Like instead of creating data and creating various Excel files at various different places, we feel that it should be data should be centralized. So everybody looks at the single source of truth. And they do, and there's a sharing and collaboration allowed within the thing while you're analyzing a dashboard, you see certain things, you can take a snapshot and send it to the concerned person who is in the group and they can look at the same data and work on that point, point of thing. Very modern and responsive UI, we keep changing on it depending on the various user feedback. We keep doing our own UX and CX research to keep improving on the dashboard experience and the reporting experience. We have a very smart query builder in the product which can be used on the various data sets, various kind of data sources, we can databases which you can connect to and the queries can be built much easier. You don't need to be a very hardcore SQL developer to do that. A lot of data shaping and custom measures. We, I think we have more than 300 to 350 come from different kind of widgets, charts, data, which you can use it for displaying it and looking in the dashboard. Very, very rich visualization objects. Some of the objects which we have are very high-end thing for analyzing the data in the multi-dimension, multi-facts, you can do that thing easy. Going further, you can have a runtime while looking at the dashboard. There are dynamic things. You can change the chart type in the runtime. You can change certain dimension on the runtime, different parameters. You can do it while you're analyzing a dashboard or a report. You need not go and export the data in Excel, which we see at many places. So the old fashioned thing, taking data in Excel and analyzing the data in that, you can do all that thing, even if you want a dynamic parameters, which can be done here. We do provide a storytelling feature which can be used to provide the generate the whole story based on the data. We have a tab layout, which is another way of representing the data. We do provide what if analysis on the document. You can do that thing. You can slice and dice the data. There's a predictive analytics piece. Also, if there are different models which are already inbuilt in using which you can do the predictive thing apart from descriptive and diagnostic. And the data alert engine. So when the data certain things like a stock level or the balance amount, it goes below certain threshold or goes above certain threshold. You can get the different kind of alert space or the different KRAs. It's on the cloud also, multi-tenancy mode, so different users can use it on the same place. And we have customized date filters, and other things which can be used further on this thing. These are the basic features. People are not familiar with the True BI. They can have a look at it. Now coming to generating AI in the business intelligence, and we've incorporated Gen AI in our True BI tool. And few of the features we've added is, one is the auto recommendation. What I mean by auto recommendation is once you give me a data set, the traditional way has been the guy who owns the data, he explains the various data elements, what are there. And the business user who is looking at a report or dashboard explains what kind of a dashboard, what kind of a KRA, what kind of a data element is looking for it. Instead of going through that all process, Using generative AI, looking at the data, we figured out what kind of dashboard you're looking at it, what kind of analysis you're looking at it, and that is done using Gen AI. Post that, even the dashboard creation happens automatically based on what kind of analysis you're looking for it. Very smartly, the True BI chart widgets are selected, whether you're looking for a heat map, you're looking for a sunburst chart, you're looking for a normal pie chart or a bar chart or a donut chart. All that is smartly selected type of the data which he has. 
and user can give that this kind of a requirement input also in a natural language. They need not now explain it and the requirement document is written down and the business, the BI developer works on it. I think that's that's gone. Now you can give directly and create that particular thing. So any and a smart user, I would say the next generation of citizen developer can go ahead and create the dashboard very easily using this particular natural language like chatbot kind of an interface which you have. We also leverage here also public LLMs. We can use other LLMs. You can bring your own model also, which can be used. Then we also provide you using GenAI analysis in the natural language. One of the thing is when you look at the dashboard, when you look at the different charts, you have to analyze it. If there's a line chart, if the line is going up or down, you need to figure it out what it means to you. And then depending on your understanding, you go and take the action on it. Now we provide you the summary at the dashboard level, on the chart level, in a natural language, what is wrong, what is not correct, and what you need to actually look at it looking at the dashboard. You can also post the it's a chatbot available on the chat conversation. Chatbot is available to you on each of the chart or the complete dashboard. And you can ask questions in the natural language out there. It is much easier, very easy thing to do that particular thing. Some of the benefits, if you look at it, I think uh, auto dashboard generation, which used to take weeks, now it can be done in minutes. You can go live with those dashboards. Even if your requirements are changing, you want to create multiple dashboards instead of going to your IT team or the BI team and asking them to do it. And sometimes it may not be in their priority. Here you can go ahead and do it, generate it yourself, look at the data and move forward. It's multilingual. The whole conversation can be in the different languages, even though the data may be remain in let's say English and it can be, the answers can be in Spanish or French as well. You can do ad hoc natural language based queries. So depending on the data, when you look at the data, you're analyzing the data, you can ask certain questions in the natural language and you get the answers in based on that. Very nice summarization in the natural language format for the whole dashboard or the data set which you have in the dashboard, you can get it very much easily, including including the grids. If you have it, you can summarize the data and use it from the business perspective. We have seen it very effective. We have rolled it out to multiple customers. They're checking out it. The response has been fantastic. Just run a small demo for that. In this demo, we will see how to develop dashboards in True BI by leveraging generative AI. The user can effortlessly generate dashboards using either an existing data source or a newly ingested data source. Gen AI powered TrueBI analyses the data and provides recommendations for various types of data analysis that can be conducted. Users can simply choose the desired analysis or request the specific analysis they are seeking by prompting in natural language. TrueBI, powered by Gen AI, offers the most suitable chart type from its library of charts to align with the analysis being performed. Now let's see how TrueBI leverages Gen AI to provide dashboard summary and analysis. Users can access predefined default analyses or quickly obtain customized analyses by simply using natural language queries. That's not all. Users can also query in various languages and request analyses in multiple languages. In this demo, we will see that's the end of my presentation. I think, uh, Oscar, we can Q&A. Over to you. Thank you, Shashi, for sharing uh, these very relevant insights. Uh, on to the questions. We have the first question, which is, how much productivity gains can you get in bot development using Genial? Okay, that's an excellent question, uh, Ms. Khan. I think looking at the RPA, true bot, RPA development, what we have seen with our many of our customers and the, who are using at it, you can expect at least 50% gain in terms of productivity, the development time used by bot developer, at least 50% and can go anywhere between 50 to 75%. Can you please clarify in what sense Gen AI is being leveraged as in what is being generated using what kind of models? Excellent question. So if you look at all the various three products which I talked about it, like for example, in case of a intelligent document processing, we are trying to get the data from the various documents. Gen AI is being used to generate the contextual text, 
contextual data which is required. As I mentioned, like for example, you're looking at a contract and you want to extract what's the liability clause or what's the warranty clause in that particular document. Using Gen AI, we are getting that thing because the state away, it may not be there. There may not be possibly a clause saying section 10.1, which is a liability clause. This may not be there. So contextually, you need to go and get the data out of it. That is one thing. Second, I mentioned there are certain reports when a certain kind of analysis, you need to look at it contextually. That is where we use Gen AI. So that is one thing on the IDP side of it. Now, moving on to the RPA side of it, while you're developing a bot, you're generating a bot, you're developing a new bot, you need to define the whole business process. And once the business process is defined, typically you go sit with the business owner, define the process, create a BRD, post that a bot developer comes, depending on the what kind of a RPA tool you are using it, let's say in case of a true bot, he needs to know about the various components available in the true bot so that he can develop the right efficient the bot for that particular process. Now, all that can be, it can be done with our training of the Gen AI. Using Gen AI, I can define that business process steps, what is required. Instead of like going through the multiple iteration with the business owner and working on it, you can define what the business process steps are. And once the steps are kind of approved by the business owner, we can quickly convert into the skeleton of bot using Gen AI. Using Gen AI, we can convert that into only thing you need to go and set certain parameters, fine tune here and there, and the bot is pretty much ready. So those are the two cases which I can talk about it. If you look at it through BI, we are using Gen AI to understand the data set which you have, understand the data set, and then realizing what kind of analysis or what kind of a dashboard you want to have it on that data set. So using Gen AI, we do that thing and we also create the dashboard with our training of whatever widgets, chart widgets we have in the true area. So those are the three cases which I can talk about. Yes, thanks. The next question is, how can you recommend public LLM within financial institutions? That's a very interesting question on the financial institution. It depends on very much, Ajay, it depends on what kind of use case you have. If you're doing a financial statement analysis, you're doing a balance sheet analysis, you're doing annual report analysis, or you're just playing like, you know, uh, maybe certain financial documents which are doing it, you can certainly, depending, there are various models coming up and the way the market, LLM market and Gen AI is moving in the last like six months, is every week, every second day, there's a new model coming in. So we need to understand what exactly your use case is and then only we can recommend the right tool for that or right LLM model for that. Okay, the next question, can a bot create basic process flow leveraging existing components built based on the one line use case defined? The answer is absolutely right. That's what we showed in the demo also. You give a one line description, what you want to do in that process using Gen AI. So there's a, I can define like, let's say it's in two steps. One step is where you can uh, like, for example, define what the business flow is. And we always call as a co-pilot. As of now, I'm not saying it's a 100% accurate meeting to that organization business process because every organization will have some tweaking in their business process. Using the genetic knowledge, I can give you the business process steps which are there. And once that business process steps kind of get approved by the business owner, we can immediately convert using the true bot or using the RPA component which you have into the bot, we can do that thing. And that is what exactly we are leveraging Gen AI for that which helps us in increasing the productivity of what of the developer like crazy. The last question we have is, do you get business logic as well using Gen AI? Yes, yes the answer is correct. Okay, Gen AI has been trained. There are different LLM models. And that's why I mentioned that domain specific LLM models, depending on the use case, the kind of bot which you want to develop it, we can connect. Like we can connect to OpenAI, which is on Azure OpenAI. You can get the complete business process, different steps. There are certain configuration out there. You can define in how many steps you want the business process. And what we have seen typically is, if I go a little bit back before the Gen AI, people like, you know, used to miss certain steps in the business process while defining it by the business owner or the bot developer understanding it. With the Gen AI, most of the steps are identified it and which makes the job much easier for the business owner as well as the bot developer to go identify it and move forward. Okay, any more questions, Muskan? 
uh, for now, um, I think we've covered all the questions, Shashi. Okay, thank you. So as part of the closing remarks, once again, thank you, Shashi, for sharing these insights. And thank you so much, everyone, for being with us till the end of the webinar. Uh, we will, once we respond to these questions, if you still have any other queries or concerns, thoughts, please write to us at events at datamatics.com. I will paste the email ID in our chat box as well. Oh, I see there's someone who's raised their hand. Pamela, um, could you please drop your question in the Q&A box? Yeah, I can see a question from Pam. Yeah. It's about uh, additional benefits and capabilities you envision Gen AI to provide moving forward. That's a very, very open-ended question, Pramila. Every day we are finding different new use cases coming out using Gen AI. And trust me, we are also working on many of them. Today, we just talked about three products. We've added a few uh, capabilities in that in terms of co-pilot and extraction. But moving forward, I'm sure every fortnight, every month will be coming out with the new features which are using Gen AI. There's a, I can say that infinite use cases can come out of the Gen AI, even in the intelligent automation. So you have to keep watching us. We are also playing around. Market is also moving very fast on it. We are on the trend track and a lot of, lot of new announcements and development will come up. Okay, I think... Uh... We've answered all the questions live. Thank you so much for being there with us till the end. Uh, once again, in case you have any more questions, feel free to drop us a note at events at datamatics.com. The email ID is pasted in the chat box. Uh, lastly, do share your feedback uh, on the feedback survey, which will appear after the webinar ends. Um, until next time and have a fantastic rest of the week. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Khan. And thank you, everyone, for joining this session. Love to have you all. See you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.